very much. I, I yield to uh, the ranking member for five minutes for his questions. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Dr. Woodruff, in your, in your testimony, you note that um, there's a new chemical for jet and boat fuel that has a cancer risk so high that nearly every person who is exposed to the chemical through foreseeable uses is expected to develop cancer. That's a pretty powerful statement. Uh, can you, in very quick summary, because I have several questions, how did such a chemical, if it has that kind of risk, get approved? Sometimes it gets through the process because EPA has had some type of political interference, which was documented in um, the previous administration. Because it has some kind of? Political interference. That's not protected the people I who see. are making the decisions. And my colleague accurately noted that it's very rare to meet the timelines that we have in Tosca. But my understanding is there's two main reasons for that. One is vast understaffing for the number of chemicals to be reviewed. And I just want to make that point because to the degree that, that we can properly staff EPA, it would help address that issue. And that the second main reason is because the studies that are submitted are often incomplete, and it has to go back to the industry to say, oh, well, well, you can't approve it until you actually get the study before us. And am I, do I have a correct understanding of that, or is there other reasons that are more significant? Yes, that is correct. Um, submitters, meaning manufacturers, are responsible for most of the links of the review of the new chemical. For example, there are 230 valid cases uh, submitted between October 2022 and 2023. Half, 85 of these cases, um, as of February 2025, over half of them are still waiting for more data from the submitter or to sign the tox TOSCA Section 5 order. Some of them are actually toxic, so they are actually having negotiating with EPA and then um, 29 of the cases, they uh, are disagreeing with what EPA is finding. So generally, and I also want to say that a lot of chemicals are getting through the process and are being approved. EPA has approved thousands of new chemicals under amended TOSCA, 3,600 over the last eight years. So what we're seeing is both need more people in there, submitters need to submit all the information, and that EPA is doing its job when it has the resources and information. Well, I do have a lot of concerns about um, many of the uh, EPA employees have either been fired or put on furlough. We may be losing a huge, vast um, brain trust that to be able to evaluate chemicals, a problem could get worse if we don't get this addressed. Uh, the, uh, I wanted to turn to the uh, plastics. And uh, we know that plastics have incredible qualities. They're used in everything everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but we also now have a better understanding of how they break down to micro and then nanoplastics and end up in our, in our bodies. And they have a series of impacts. And can you just share some of your highlights of your research on the, the risks involved of either plastic themselves or the additives that are put in to make the plastic suitable for different purposes? Right. Our research um, using high quality, uh, the best quality evidence reviews has found that microplastics are suspected to increase the risk of effects on the um, gut, uh, respiratory effects, and also effects on reproductive health, particularly affecting sperm quality, and could be increasing the risk of colon and lung cancer. And so that's just for microplastics. What we know about many of the additives that are in, microplast in plastics and microplastics, so that's phthalates, bisphenols, PFAS, flame retardants. There's like 16,000 chemicals that are used in plastics. We know, have good information on less than 5% of them. But let's just talk about phthalates. Phthalates can increase the risk of adverse effects on male reproductive health, like lower testosterone and uh, sperm count, which can lead to infertility. It can increase the risk of preterm birth metabolic disorders like diabetes, and accord, this is according to the best available sci science, including high quality systematic reviews conducted by both EPA's Office of Research and Development and the National Academy of Sciences. We also know similarly that bisphenols can affect female reproductive toxicity as well as uh, can increase the risk of neurodevelopmental toxicity. Um, that's just for those few chemicals, and there's many more that are in plastics. Well, I, I think this is an area where we have to spend a lot more attention because it's received relatively little. Uh, we, it's since the 1950s, plastic started being used as a coating on our, on our cups for, for hot liquids. 
we'd have a huge exposure through that and through plastic bottles. And uh, uh, I was stunned by our plastic testimony in the, the last cycle of the amount of plastic and that the average American now has equivalent, I think that was described as equal to a plastic spoon uh, in your brain, uh, which is a shocking uh, additive. So, but I did want to ask you about the Office of Research and Development. Uh, there's efforts to dissolve that. Why is ORD important to keep, and if so, why? ORD, the work that the scientists in ORD do affect and really protect every person who lives in the United States. ORD does the essential research that um, allows us to understand what the toxicity of chemicals are, but they also are there when there's a spill or a terrorist event. For example, when there was anthrax here in the Capitol, ORD scientists were the ones that figure out how to clean it up. They also were there on the ground at East Palestine. Um, the vast response, they also identify the toxicity of many of these toxic substances that we now know are affecting people's health. Um, they also develop the methods by which we figure out whether there are toxic chemicals in the environment. For example, ORD scientists were the ones that figured out that a facility was dumping PF a PFOS chemical into the drinking water supply of P a residents in North Carolina. Once they measured that and identified it and worked with the state, they were able to stop that. To dismantle that allows both less best available science or less high quality science less unbiased science, as well as less ability to respond to the many n different types of environmental needs that arise consistently or episodically in the United States. Thank you so much.